It's almost been a week since the earthquake struck Nepal. Can you tell us a little bit? Give us an update. Yeah, well, as we all know, uh, a very powerful earthquake uh, struck Nepal uh, on Saturday. Basically, it's been a, a catastrophe in Kathmandu, but uh, perhaps even more so in some of the rural villages, you know, outlying villages in the mountains. And uh, damage assessments are still going on. We've seen the images on TV. When people realize now they're homeless, uh, their food supply has been cut off, their jobs are gone, businesses are shut down, schools are closed, they're living in parks under tarpaulins and tents. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, life as uh, they knew it is gone and, and disrupted. So the second trauma goes on for weeks and months and even has a longer tail than that. And uh, so the second crisis is uh, just as important to respond to as the initial 48 hours. Right. And I suspect over the days ahead, we're going to start hearing about the stories of these remote villages and, and what happened there. And of course, they're much more inaccessible than the people in the main city of Kathmandu. And, and that's going to be a very difficult place. World Vision works in a lot of the rural areas uh, in Nepal, so that's going to be one of our strengths is, is working with people in those villages as we gain access to them again. Now, Rich, you have yourself been in disaster areas and responses yeah. and also with the Syria crisis and in our travels there in refugee camps. In this response, tell us a little bit about the details of how World Vision is responding in Nepal. Yeah. Well, first of all, um, we're trying to distribute uh, needed supplies. So cooking kits, tarpaulins, blankets, uh, just basic things that a family would need uh, to get through a few days of, of this crisis. Mm -hmm. We will focus on child protection. World Vision is a child-focused agency. So uh, we will set up what we call child-friendly spaces. And if you think about thousands and thousands of people disrupted, and what are the children doing? And, mm -hmm. and, and, and what about the trauma that the children have experienced? So we set up these uh, child-friendly spaces. They're almost like little, little schools, uh, temporary schools, where kids can come and they can start to process their trauma. There'll be counselors there. Uh, there'll be loving staff caring for them, giving them things to do, coloring and activities and crafts and songs and just things to make them feel like their life can be back to normal a bit. Now, you had mentioned people rebuilding. And in responses with relief recovery, tell us a little bit, how long will it take for Nepal? And World Vision to help them. Yeah, build. and one thing that's important to know about World Vision's uh, relief efforts in Nepal is uh, before the earthquake struck, we had over 200 staff there. We've been there for almost 15 years working in uh, in Nepal with the communities. Uh, so we had people ready to respond already. Uh, we're sending in a relief team, international relief team of experts in sanitation and hygiene and, and health and food and and child protection. So they're coming in from all over the world, our relief team. Um, but we've been there for a number of years. Uh, we will be working with the Nepalese people uh, for the next uh, five years, uh, rebuilding from this. And th there's a lot of work that has to be done over the long haul. This is a marathon and not a sprint. And even though it'll disappear from our news headlines pretty quickly, um, the work in Nepal will go on for, uh, for months and maybe even years to come. And so uh, those that give to World Vision or give to organizations like World Vision, uh, that money will create a fund that hopefully will last us uh, not just through the initial response, but will help us in the rebuilding phase uh, over the next 12 months or so.